Hi everyone, it's Rosemary again. And today we're going to be painting the gnome. Um, I had offered this gnome to you in either of these two designs. So I am going to go over both of them in the same video rather than just keep doing more videos. Uh, so the most of it has started out the same way with the beard and the flesh and you know the white and the gray. And then I'll go over with you how to do this part uh, with a pencil and also I'll I'll pay, probably paint this one with you, okay? Uh, so you should have your brushes. You should have your the ones who have the red. I mean, you all have a strip of paint. You have a little bit extra paint on this one because I think I gave you eight different colors, two um, <clears throat> little ones and the one strip of the, um, the, the six colors that you're going to use a little bit more of. But um, with the beard, you, everyone is starting out with the gray. All right, and then we're gonna be dry brushing the white over the gray, and you can do as much white as you want. I mean, you'll see here that I even showed you this little guy because he's done a little differently with the red, and um, he has a smoother area here, so he's not gonna get all the depth that this one has. But, you know, you, you can still do more white over that and get it a lot whiter also. I just, there's a video up on YouTube on this one also. I just did this for the children. So you can look at all the different videos of the gnomes on YouTube and decide to do it however you want. That's up to you, it's your piece. So let's get started. So like I said, you should have your brushes out, your paints that I gave you, and we're gonna start with a medium-sized brush and paint the gray on the beard. So let's do that first. This way we can get that nice and dry, nice and smooth. Hope everyone's doing all right. In this crazy time that we have right now that's going on hope to see everybody real soon this is uh it's great that we can do youtube and we can i can do zoom classes but it's not great because i don't get to see anybody anymore and, and you know what i've been mentioning on some of these last videos that i did you all have my email on the directions i believe i put the email on the directions yes and send me pictures of your pieces because I don't get to see what you're doing. So I'd love to see finished pieces. And you have my email, like I said. And for those of you who don't have my email, you can contact me on Facebook, on Messenger, Rosemary Ceramics. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I, would, I would love to see. I would love to see your finished pieces. But thank goodness for Zoom. Thank goodness for YouTube, that at least I can still reach you people. The only good thing about doing this is that I don't have to go outside. I mean, it's cold out and we're having this big storm coming in the east right now. We're supposed to have a lot of snow here. We've been very lucky so far this year. We really haven't had that much snow. But we're going to get it this time, I think. Now the bottom, you should always paint something on the bottom. I think I, I did that one in the pink. This one I never finished because I was doing it in a class. This one I did in the navy. So I kind of followed the color that was on the back of the shirt, on the shirt part on the back. I think they are the cutest. I love this one that I just did yesterday. And I put that video up on YouTube also. I'll go over that with you, some of the things that I did. I'll show you how to make the hearts. All right, so get the gray on there. You have to let that dry. So while that's drying, before we do the white, and you have plenty of time to let it dry. You don't have to do it as fast as I'm doing it. It's important for the colors to be dry. Swish the brush, dry it out really well. And I'm going to put a little bit of flesh, which is this color. And don't get mixed up with the salmon. This is salmon and flesh. The flesh is like a peachy color. Well, it's more of a tan color. It's Actually, it's called peach, but put a, take a little bit of that. So you don't have to pour them out on a palette. I know I always tell you to have a palette in case you have jars that you have to pour your paint out. And you can use an actual palette. You can use a tile. You can use a piece of foil. You can use a paper plate. Whatever you have, it'll work. So while the beard is drying, I'm going to do the nose. And I always start in the middle because if I have too much paint on my brush, I don't want it to bleed into other areas. And then when I have less on my brush, 
just flatten the brush and let that make a nice edge for you. One brush load does one coat, but I'm gonna be doing a second coat on it anyway. Because I see where I went out of the lines with the, with the gray, it's gonna need a little bit more paint. Okay, one brush load does the whole coat. Now, the rouging is, uh, this one, it's got the salmon rouging on it, and on this one, I did the pink rouging on it. But if you have your own blush, you ladies, if you have blush, you can actually blush his nose, which is easy to do, rather than trying to dry brush it. So I'm gonna do a second coat on his nose. Now I'm doing it kind of fast. I mean, like I said, I think it's better if you let it dry a little bit to do your second coats. in my house right now with all the videos and the YouTube classes I'm doing. A lot of gnomes. I've done him. I have a video up on YouTube in uh, Christmas colors. I have the children's one that I just did yesterday. And then I'm going to have these two. So, And you, you could actually do him for any holiday. He could be done in orange and purples and you could do him for Halloween and put little bats on him, spiders, bats on his hat. It's separated in black, and you could do the same thing I did here and separated in black and orange. You could even do the rim differently. Like on this one, I did the rim a different color, but on this one, I just kept it the same color. This one, I kept it the same color. I figured for the kids, it's easier to do that. He's really dotted up, this one, but he's kind of cute. All right, so now... I'm gonna take a little bit of the white and I'm gonna dry brush the beard. All right, and I'm gonna do it with this big brush. I mean, you should have a dry brushing brush, but most of, some of you don't, so put a little bit of paint in the brush, take it out on the paper towel, and you wanna go horizontally across the grain so that you keep the color in the crevices. So if you have the big brush like this, it does it really fast. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly dry, the brush, but you wanna dry enough that you don't have a, a puddles going into the grooves of the beard because you wanna leave that gray. But every time I dip, I wipe. The only thing is if it's very wet, it's hard to go over it a second and third time without really letting it dry. Okay, very lightly, the side of the brush. And I flip my brush over and use the other side because there's always paint on the other side too. And like I said, you can do as many coats of the white as you want. You want him to have a dark gray beard, then don't do that many coats of the white. I'll go back and do a second coat. Now, like I said, it's, it's a good idea if you let this dry a little first. But for the sake of the video, I just want to get it on there. So you can see the difference in the one coat versus the two coats. Now you can already see there, that's the second coat and that's the first coat. And try not to have lines, like when you go across, kind of crisscross it a little bit so you don't have, you don't want to have lines going across his beard. Get him out of white paint. other side now. I probably can't get a third coat on here now because it's pretty wet. I always like to have a nice white because I like the contrast. But like I said, you could do as many coats as you want. Okay, I mean, he's a little darker than, than this guy and, and this one. So do as many coats as you want. I'm going to stop and I'm going to move on. Wash my brush. And always draw your brush really well before you go into another color. You don't want your paint running down the piece. I think most of you know that by now. Okay. So, all right, let me let me go over 
this one with you first. What I did to him is I took a pencil, and I could actually do it on here. And you see these grooves in the hat, all the grooves? Start in those grooves and take a pencil and draw a line in each of those crevices. Just draw that line for now, whatever you see. You don't have to go all the way around yet, okay? And I think there's one up on the top also, yeah, and one here. So you've kind of got three lines here. I don't know if you could see them. One, two, three, over there. Now I'm gonna follow those around on an angle. And actually there's another one up here too. So there's four. There's that fourth one up there. Whoop, where is it? There. Yeah, that's it. That's the fourth one up there, okay? So now we're gonna follow those lines around on an angle. So if you take this first one, just kind of eyeball it and Kind of make it go on an angle. Can you see that? All right, so when I first started coming around, it wasn't going to meet that one, so I kind of adjusted it and angled it, and that's what you're going to do to all of them. You're just going to go from one side and then from the other side and just keep eyeballing it. Now you see that one is up here and the other one is down here. I'm going to just try to angle it that they, they meet each other. Okay, see that? That's how I got the angle. You have to watch it as you come around because they're not going to meet. So one's going to be high, one's going to be lower. And then you use that to kind of connect them and that gives you the angle. All right. And the same thing down here and here. All right. And if you don't want to stripe it, you don't have to. You could make a solid red hat like that. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to paint the white first. Uh, actually, yeah, paint the white first. I would put your lines in and paint the white first. And you may not have very even lines, which is why I put the dots there. So later on you go back with the back end of a brush and you put the dots and that camouflages when you're not even. So draw your lines first, paint your white, then paint your red. And I did a white on here. If you don't want to, you can go straight through with the red down to the bottom. Like I did on this one, you can just do it all red. Then you're gonna go paint your pinks. You have your darker pink here. And again, that's your choice. And I have the lighter pink here on his toes. Uh, his toes, his shoes. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to make hearts. I'll, I'll do it with the peach because I don't have the, um, the pinks in front of me right now. Now, you know dots are with the back end of a brush. And, oh, here's a perfect example also, too, of with these, I dip, every time I do a dot, I dip in the paint. Dip, dot, dip, dot, dip, dot, okay? But on this one, I didn't do that. I used the same brush load, hand, the handle of the brush, I used the same load of the brush, and I did one, two, three, four, and you see how they get smaller? And I did that as a different design going all the way around. And on this one, I did hearts. When they were dry, I went back and put white dots in between, okay? So I'm just gonna show you how to do the heart because that's kind of a little different. I guess I've, I've shown some of you in the past how to do a heart. All right, so when you do a heart, that's a little big, so I'm going to take a little smaller one. Okay, so you, you dip. You dip your handle of your brush in the paint, and you make two dots touching each other. Okay, see that? Looks like eyes. Have them touch, and then use the handle of the brush or a very pointy brush you may have to very gently pull down in the middle, and you have a heart. And do it again. Okay. Try to make it a little bigger. One, two, and there's a heart. All right, when I, when I pull down, I do the two circles. And when I pull down, it has a, a little bit of a weird shape like that. And I just take the handle of the brush and pull it on either side to fill it in a little bit so it doesn't have that belly shape on it. Okay, and it's very simple, very simple. Just remember, don't put them too close together, wherever you may wanna put the hearts. Um, I have them on the rim of this one, but you can also choose to put them along the design going around, separating the colors. You could do that. You, when your dots are dry, you can even take a toothpick and go back and put a little white dot in the center of the colored dot. And my dots, I did the two different pinks on here. So you can play. Now this dot, this is a very interesting dot I've been doing lately. I haven't really shown anybody how to do this, but 
It's another simple thing. You just take the eraser of the pencil, and I'll do it with the gray. I have a gray here right now. Put a little bit of paint on it, and you have big dots, okay? That makes big dots, all right? Rather than the back end of a brush. I kinda like those, those are a little different. And you know, there's so many more creative ways of doing pieces with hand painting and stuff, but when I do these videos and I'm trying to teach, especially doing it uh, in a video and I'm not in front of you, I have to find easy ways that I know I can communicate to you um, and it's easy for you to do without me being there. So, like I said, if you wanted to be creative and you want to do the hearts freehand, if you want to paint something else on there, that's your prerogative. But for teaching purposes, I have to keep it simple. So, all right, I think we're good on that. And if anybody has any questions on him, please, please just email me, okay? Email me or message me, either way. And uh, you can look at, on Facebook, Rosemary Ceramics. I most times put up a lot of the finished pieces that I do on there. So I'll keep him out here so you can you can still look at him while I'm painting this guy. So, <coughs> excuse me. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing that I did on this, I'm gonna separate the sections first. So I'm gonna use, which section did I use? Okay, so I used, it, it doesn't matter how you separate. I'm gonna separate this one a little bit differently, a, a different angle. But use those grooves, like you can use this groove right here and come around, and when you come around, kind of go down on an angle. And do it from both ways so you know where it's gonna meet, okay? So we're not gonna do this. I mean, that's up to you. If you wanna separate it like this is separated, you could do the lime and the, and the turquoise. You could do lime, turquoise, lime, turquoise. I mean, you could still do that, but it takes a lot longer to do that, and you have the time. I don't when I'm, I'm doing the video. So I'm gonna start out with the lime on the top. Is my big brush. Okay. It's hard just to work in this little little spot. I want you to be able to see everything. Okay, so I'm going to do the line. I'm using a big brush because I like to use the uh, largest brush for the area that I'm doing so that I don't see brush strokes so much. The bigger the brush, the less brush strokes you see. And always make sure that you pull it out. it out. See that one brush load? It's going to do the whole top of the hat. Now I can still see my pencil lines through the paint and that's another reason why I go around and I put little design on the separation of the two colors. One brush load of this big brush did this whole top. Now it's always a good idea to do a second coat. So just let it dry for a few minutes. and then go back and do a second coat, but it's pretty good coverage. If I wanna hide my pencil marks, I'll do a second coat. Okay, now I could stop, wash my brush, do this part, which is probably what I should do, but rather than keep getting up and going and washing my brush really well, but you can do that. Go wash your brush, put a coat of your turquoise, your light turquoise on the bottom. And you have the navy too, I mean, you could even do the navy. You could separate it, but you know, you could change the colors around. Like I said, this is just a guide. You're the artist. I always tell you, you're the artist. So you do whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a second coat up here right now since I have the lime in my brush. I think it gives it a little bit better coverage, a little more solid coverage. And if I see, like I have a lot of pencil lines on this because I showed you how to do the Valentine one also, but you won't have as long. You should only, if you do it like this, you should only have one light pencil line going around. And then I did the stitches over it to kind of hide the hide them. Okay, look how easy that is. One, two, three. All right, wash your brush out again, and we'll go do the turquoise on the bottom. Now, down here, it's I wouldn't use this big brush to do this edging down here, but I'll do most of it and then I'll come back. Well, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll edge it first. All right, I'm gonna edge first. I'm using a small brush. 
And the way I do this to keep it even is I start in the middle here and that right on the edge and then I flatten my brush and just pull it across and that gives me a nice edge. And always watch where the brush is going. Don't watch uh, what you just did. Watch where the brush is going. Watch the hairs of the brush. Okay. Again, in the middle I start, and then when there's a little less in the brush, I scoop it across. And it gives you a nice line. trying to work so that you could see what I'm doing, but I don't know, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got all of that area done. I just have to do the front by his beard, so I have to be a little more careful here. So again, start on the edge, and when there's less in the brush, and we scoop it nice and gentle, and then smooth it out. I'm gonna watch around his nose. When I have excess, and I want to leave a puddle there, so I just smooth it out, spread it out. We have plenty of area to get rid of. Look at that little brush, how much it holds. These are brushes that I purchased on Amazon for the kids. They're so inexpensive, and they work great. This one holds a great point. I had another one, a flat one, and that's okay, but this is really good. I mean, they're not as good as the brushes that I gave everyone in the beginning. Okay, just a little bit more. And I'm probably gonna need two coats because with the gray, I did go out of the lines a little bit and you could see through it. But I'll go back and do a second coat as soon as I'm finished with the first coat. So now I'm gonna do the, go back to the big brush. Okay, so I think I have a lot of water in this brush yet, even though I thought I got it out. I can see how thin the paint is. Yeah, definitely gonna need a couple of coats. Again, I do the same thing that I did with the little brush, I do with the big brush. Pull it out, get rid of most of the paint, and then flatten an edge. If you have a good shape to your brush, it works really well. Look at that nice line that that got across there. Like I said, you don't have to sit here and watch me paint. You can just pause the video and fast forward it to what you're uh, ready to paint next. But I just wanted you to see how nice the flat end of the brush makes such a beautiful edge. I'm going around right away, but I could see that I really should be letting it dry a little bit. You have that time, don't rush it. Let that really dry. That's why when I did the lime, I let that dry a little bit first and then I'll go back and do another coat on all of the areas.
Okay. And while that's drying, I'm gonna see if I can do my edging a little bit better. I, I could do that another time and I could do that. But you see, I'm a little bit light here in those areas. So I would uh, definitely do a couple of coats on those colors. I'm not gonna do that now. I just wanna be able to show you what to do. So anytime you see through your color, I would go back and I would do another coat. Okay, but I'm gonna move on to the, the navy on his, um, on his shirt in the back. Now, for those of you who care, I don't know if everyone cares, but this is a Gare, G-A-R-E, piece of bisque that I buy from them. These are all Gare paints that I'm using. I find them great for putting these kits together now, especially because I have to do these strips, and the little bottles don't hold that much, so I use all of Gare's paints, okay, to fill all of my little strips for the children, for the adults, except the red. The red, I like Duncan's Barnyard Red. That's one of my favorite reds. Okay, that's how I got such a, a nice coverage on the red. All right, but all the others are Gare paints. So I'm gonna use my medium-sized brush to do the navy on the back. Make sure this is dry. And slot my navy. And the navy, you definitely need a couple of coats. It's funny, I get so many more ridges in the paint when I use a round brush. So I just keep going over it, go different directions, smooth it out. That's why I like a flat brush for doing acrylics, but that's, you can't always use the flat brush depending on the area that you're working on. And on this, I'm just gonna do one coat right now just for you to get the idea of how to do it. But you should do a couple of coats. And you might need your little brush to edge. I got it, see, I got in there because this is a, uh, a very pointy brush, which is really nice. And that was able to get in between the shoe and his beard and his shirt in the back here, his jacket, whatever it is. Okay, but you see how you can see through that color? So that's why I want you to do a couple of coats on that. Any way you put the navy, you know, if you put some another color on the back here, that's fine, but any way you use the navy or any of the colors, you need a couple of coats, but especially the navy. Don't try to glob it on like that because if that dries like that, that stays like that and it's not gonna look so nice. You don't want ridges in your paint. So I kind of backtrack as I'm doing it. Even though this is just one coat, I go back over a little bit of what I just did. If it's dry, back up, move forward. Flatten that brush out to get that nice edge. forth to smooth it out and it's hard to kind of back up when it's wet I, I see that it's lifting a little bit so the, you know it's very important to let your paints dry in between coats done here. Like I said, I, I think I did at least three coats of the blue when I did this. I guess the darker the color, the more coverage it needs. And I also did the bottom in the navy, but if you find that you're having trouble getting coverage with the navy, you can do it in whatever color you want. You could bring the, the turquoise down over it, you could put the gray on it, it doesn't really matter. You should always paint the bottoms, always paint the bottoms. I was taught when I first started in ceramics, nothing is ever complete unless you do the bottoms. So always paint the bottoms. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to do that right now because it's sticking to my paper and I don't want that to happen. Okay. So let's do the shoes. And the shoes I did in a little darker teal, but you could do them in the salmon. The salmon, the salmon is the color that's on the dots on him. Can it be in here? Oh, yeah. 
get that navy out of my brush. And if I wasn't sitting here, I'd go to the sink and I'd wash it out. And everybody knows how to wash a brush. Put the soap in your brush, hold the tip, push in and wiggle, and that gets the paint out of the ferrules of the brush. And then always shape your brushes back to their original shape, and they'll last a long time. It's important to get the paint out of the ferrule here because it does kind of thicken up in there, and then that's what spreads the hairs of the brush out. So, and you never leave your brushes laying in water because that's what makes the glues come off in here also. Okay, so let's do the turquoise on the shoes. Nice color. I love these two colors. There's a light turquoise and a dark turquoise. And I have, right now, I think I have probably 10 videos up on YouTube. If there's ever anything you want, just email me, call me, message me, and I'll put a kit together for you, anything you would like. Because each, each library picks out different items, and then I do a video or a YouTube, either one. So you won't always see everything I've done up on YouTube because some of the libraries choose to do Zoom. But you can also look at my Facebook page. And if you see anything there, just let me know if you'd like it. This color covers beautifully. One coat. Every color is different. Yeah, all I need is one coat on this. And like I said, this is not the best I do when I'm doing these videos because I'm just kind of doing it fast. But it's really more about teaching than about my finished piece. It's more about your finished piece and how you do it. So take your time. There's no rush. Nobody's rushing you to do these pieces. Okay. All right. So now um, th his nose is... Um, just a little bit of the peachy color. And you could actually, like I said, you could you could use your own blush that works out even better. But I'll put a little bit of peach over here. The salmon, actually, this is the salmon. And I use my big brush. Take it out. If you have a dry brushing brush, that's the best way to do it. And just stipple some on his nose. And if you get it on too dark, you put a coat of the flesh over it. Can't see what I'm doing. Okay, that's all you have to do. Very simple. Or if you have your own blush, just use your brush and just dust it on. Okay, all right, so what do we do next? Okay, so with the navy, I'm gonna do stitches in between the two colors. And take your pointy brush and put a little bit of the paint in it and roll it to a nice point, okay? And then just Line, 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 line. Just little dashes, okay? And take that all the way around to separate your two colors. And it doesn't matter if they're thick, they're thin. It, and the blue, you don't need two coats on the, on the little dashes. They cover with one coat. And that covers the pencil mark. Now you can even do a dash and a dot, a dash and a dot. I mean, that's another way to do it also. I'll do it on here. I don't know if you see it on here. You could do a dash, and the dot would be with the back end of the brush. A dot, a dash, a dot, a dash, a dot. That's another thing you could do also. Okay. And always brace your hand. You see how I brace my hand? Some people work like this. I have trouble working like that on my pinky. I'd rather work on the side of my pinky. You have to find what's comfortable. Just don't work up in the air like this because brace him, brace your arm. And then brace your hand if you can. That gives you the steadiness. If you're working up in the air, it 
You're not going to be have as you know steady a hand. You'll be shaking, and then your lines will look it. I only dipped maybe two or three times and went all the way around with those stitches. See that? All the way around. All right, and then I did little X's on the top, unless you can come up with a, another idea. Again, put a little paint in the brush and do an X, okay? And separate them. Okay, the way I separate them is I'll do two about an inch apart and then one in between it about an inch up. And then again, you go on the other side of it. You want to stagger them. And don't put them too close together. Okay, got that? See how they're staggered? The one above it is in between the two below it. And then again, as you go up. All right, so I'm not gonna finish it, but you get the idea of what to do on there. And then on the bottom, I did three dots with the salmon color, and then one dot with the darker teal. And again, that's the back end of the brush. So the three dots are similar to the heart I was showing everyone before, but you don't have them touch. You don't do them like that, far apart like that. That's kind of a little, well, that's not too bad, but. I try to keep them fairly close because I want it to be like a little cluster, not as tight as the heart, but if you do it like this, that's, that's too far apart, way too far apart, okay? And then separate them by about an inch and keep the dots close together, okay? So we'll do that on here. One, two, three. All right, now you could do hearts on him too. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't do hearts on him like on the Valentine one. And each dot that you do, if you don't dip again, are gonna get a little smaller. So if you wanted the dots to be the same size, you could at least dip twice. And also, again, the two there, and then one below it in the middle. See, it's like one, two, one. And then again, one, and then I'm going to do one here, and I didn't do them on here. You can. What I did is I put just the uh, dark turquoise dot going around there, but you can do the same thing. You can follow the, the uh, salmon dots down onto the rim of his hat also your piece, you can do whatever you want. So after I did that, and you could also do the navy dot in there, which might be nice. Let's see how that looks, because I have the teal. Let's see, we make him a little bit different. You put it in between. And the one thing when you're doing the navy with the back end of the brush, you get very good coverage. Okay, kind of like the navy in between there. So it gives you a little different look so you can see what you want. And then what you can do is let's see how the pencil dots will look. Dip. I don't want to have too much on there because I don't want to blob. Let's see how these look on here. I'm going to have to roll it a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a little big, the pencil to use on the side, so you're getting more of an oval. But if that's okay with you, yeah, the oval kind of looks cute. See that? And I can get that right on the rim, and that gives me an oval dot. Like I said, there's so many different things you can do with the tools that you have around the house. We did a class the other day, and I did an online Zoom class with one of the paint companies, and we used bubble wrap, and we took the sponge on a stick, and we put the color very thin on the bubble wrap, and then laid the bubble wrap down onto the plate and these were glazes I don't know if it'll work with stains because they dry too fast but this is with glazes and we laid it down and the background is um, bubble I'll, I'll show you I have it right here that's the bubble background yeah it gets a little heavy in spots but 
kind of cute. Just a little different technique. So you can use all different um, tools that you have in the house to make different designs on pieces. Whatever the shape is, you just have to practice and you have to try, okay? So I, I think that I pretty much have all of him done. And um, I like those little oval. You see them, how they are kind of oval because the pencil wouldn't lay flat because the rim is pointed kind of there. And I think that looks adorable. So another idea for a pencil. A pencil dot, it came oval. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave you here. Like I said, finish your pieces. I would love to see some of them. Please send me some pictures. If you have any questions, email me. You have my email on the directions that I put into the kits. You should have my email on the bottom. Okay. And thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And hopefully we get through the snowstorm okay, which I'm sure we will. We got through uh, COVID so far for a year, so we should manage to get through a snowstorm. That's probably gonna seem minor compared to what we've been living with. So um, thanks again. If you need anything, email me. Thank you very much and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Bye.